today we're going to be talking about one of the best wild game seasonings I've found for whitetail, deer, elk, whatever red meat you can throw at us. I'm sitting down with the Kentucky Waterfall himself. He's going to be asking me about some of my favorite ways to smoke wild game. Now, you guys saw the chili episode a few weeks ago, right? We're going to talk about the chili a little bit, but we're also going to talk about backstrap. We're going to talk about roast. We're going to talk about my favorite barbecue sauce. We're going to talk about even more. There's a lot of things coming at you on how to cook your wild game to perfection in this episode. It's not just smokers either. We're going to talk about all kinds of slow cooks. I'm going to talk about neck roast. Get ready. If you have not eaten yet, warning, this is going to make you hungry. Jacob and I were starving by the time we got through this short episode. All right, before we go on, I want to tell you to go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel, subscribe to the podcast. We're dropping this stuff every single week. We're talking with experts, which I'm not. I'm just a food enthusiast here, but normally you get an expert. And we're, we're unveiling tips on hunting, on fishing. It's across whitetail, it's turkeys, it's predator hunting, it's bass fishing, it's trout fishing. We've got a lot of huge plans for this content this year on Gearbox Talk here with Go Wild. So subscribe to the Go Wild channel. Make sure you check out our other show, Uncensored, too. It's a lot, lot different than Gearbox Talk. It's a lot of BS and sitting around having fun. I think you'd like it. All right, this is Gearbox Talk with me, Brad Luttrell. All right, man, everybody's coming off deer season and hopefully, unlike me so far, is not sitting on tag soup. They've got some new venison that they are planning to use and cook and eat. I want to talk through some of your like go-to and favorites when you're cooking some of these cuts and how you use the meat. Um, my personal cut, and I think a lot of people really enjoy this, is a backstrap. So how do you cook it? What's your approach to it? Tell us about your Brad's back. It's funny. I cooked backstrap this weekend and, um, I did it different than, uh, a lot of, uh, than a way a lot of people would do it when they smoke it. Uh, but it, because it was easier, <laughs> I, I had some friends over and I was running, uh, my offset smoker. And so that thing takes a lot of work cause you're having to monitor temperature a lot more. Um, I like the product of, of that smoker a lot. Um, but I was, I was afraid that if I put the meat on there and was just smoking it, I would not get a chance to sear it at the end. Cause I might over smoke it and get it too far along to sear. Cause obviously when you hit something with a skillet, um, the temperature goes up and it can take it 15 degrees past what you intended. So I was lazy and I actually seared first, which is not as good for smoking. It's going to get that crust on there, but, um, it was just, you know, given the fact that I was juggling, I served smoked sausage, smoked uh, ten, the inner tenderloins from from a deer. I served. Uh, we had shrimp. We um, we had like ungodly amounts of meat. I think we had five different meats that we served at this thing um, for our friends. So I want to note for everybody, I was not invited to this party. No, no, you weren't. I'm a little disappointed about that. Man. Yeah, I actually we we didn't invite. Uh, no, this would have been our normal dinner club. We have like this little dinner club that we yeah. do. Yeah. Um. And and so I we wanted to do that, but it, respiratory season. All of our friends' kids are getting sick. Uh, RSV has been real bad this year. So we were like, you know what? We're just gonna get like one couple. You know, Julie and Paul. Yeah. Um. So that they came over. We ate, we had ate a bunch of food, and I I, I did backstrap. Uh. Normally. What would the what the, I think the best way to do a backstrap if if you're going to smoke it is to uh, smoke it first. You know, Mike Larson and I were talking about that. You're going to get deeper penetration. Smoke it low. It's it, these are smaller cuts of meat, so they're not going to be able to take on a ton of smoke. Um, they you know the they're going to cook faster is what I mean by that. You know, if you got a pork butt, yeah, that thing will cook eight hours before you wrap it and it takes on you know tons of smoke flavor. You're not really going to be able to get that with a backstrap just purely from a temperature play it's going to get to a point to where you need to sear it soon right does fat content go into play there as far as how much smoke it takes on good question um on on something like a backstrap i trim that thing to perfection because the there's not enough time for that fat to render yep. it's going to cook fast i mean we're talking about an hour hour and a half total here um, for that hard venison fat to render i mean you're talking slow cooker in in a lot of moisture like if you're going to do barbacoa 
Uh, you might not worry about it as much, but it's even then it's going to take a while to break down. And if you start getting into like sh- the shanks that that uh, those tendons that are in the legs when you cook those, that stuff will turn to gelatin. But it, when it even when the food starts to cool, you'll it'll still be there if you didn't cook it long enough. So f- for wild game, generally you want to trim off that chalk like fat as much as possible and don't depend on it to break down. Um, you know, the, especially if you're serving it to other people, one thing I've learned about backstrap too, is to, um, you know, a lot of people will do steaks with their backstrap. They'll do the butterfly steak where you cook it halfway, fold it over. That's fine. I like to smoke mine whole, uh, or, or cut it in half and and I'll smoke that. Or you can do the whole thing if you're feeding enough people, but I'll smoke it that way. And then I'll slice it like a prime rib and, and serve it that way. And the, there's two effects here. Um, this sounds really stupid, but I was talking to another wild game chef, uh, another, I say that as if I'm a chef, I didn't mean it that way. Um, I was talking to a wild game chef and, uh, in Montana th- this past year. And he was telling me that he also slices when he serves venison because people, um, they, they, they don't even know how to cut their own food, right? They cut with the grain and it can make it chewy. So he goes ahead and slices his, I do mine for that reason, but also for thickness. If I, if I smoke the whole thing to temperature and I got it to that perfect 130 degrees, which is going to be like the perfect amount of medium rare, I'll slice it super thin to where now it's fork tender and you're not getting like too much in your mouth, which sounds stupid to like control somebody's meal down to that point. You're like, well, they're not a baby. They can cut their own food. But some people can't, man. Some people put like giant mouthfuls in there and now it's a bad experience. So um, I cut mine once I get it smoked, I'll cut it like a quarter inch thick and serve it to people. And uh, it's just like melting your mouth at that point. You know, it's so delicious. I, um, what we're talking about today, we're going to talk about backstrap, which we just did. This is my new favorite. I, I, I've been using Carving House from Tact Calories was probably my favorite for a long time. It's and, and this is Carving House, essentially, with a little more kick. And when I say kick, don't don't get freaked out. You know, this isn't like, like it's not even spicy, in my opinion, which my wife would tell you that um, maybe I'm not the best judge of that. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I think I've burned out any ability to taste <laughs> heat in our family. Uh, but this, this is not my, my friend, Julie, that came over, she, she's not spice, doesn't like spice. And, you know, we didn't have leftovers on this, you know, it's so good. So, um, what I like about this in particular rub, this, this is the bruiser blend. We sell this as a combo with the herb dust, uh, from Tacticalories. And this is awesome on potatoes, by the way. Uh, but the, the thing I like about this is that deep penetration, like I, that backstrap, I put it in there, you know, several hours before that fine rub gets in there deep and, and it's not going to fall off. And, uh, you know, anytime you rub something, if you're putting it on and the rub's still dry looking, you didn't give it enough time. You know, you really want to let it get to a point where it's moist. Uh, but the other nice thing about the sear on this is you can see, um, I don't know if the camera will be able to see, but even up top there, there's huge chunks of the seasoning on here and that stuff crisp up so delicious, you know, <laughs> it, it turns into this, uh, this, this bark almost, uh, it's not a bark at per se. That means something else. Bark. It's like a pork butt when you think of a bark, uh, but it's got a really nice sear to it because of those crispies or, or the, these, these chunks become crispy. So I like those little explosions of garlic that you get with mm-hmm. that too. Yeah, man. Um, this, this is like, this is, I'm just going to say it's the best backstrap rub that I've had. The other thing you didn't ask me about, about it, but I'm going to say it, um, a lot of people don't realize everybody talks about backstrap like it's the holy grail. I like backstrap. The uh, there are cuts I like more for this exact process. This whole this exact same thing. The the challenge of the backstrap is what I said. It's it's the fact that you have that sear and smoke. You can't pack on as much smoke. Um, my favorite wild game cut to do that process to is the the football roast, right? The sirloin. And a lot of people cut that up for steaks. Um, and in, in my opinion, you're jumping the gun a little bit. The best, because now you got a smaller cut of meat. You had this big, beautiful, fatless piece of meat. And I mean, when you slice that thing, there, there's one little line of fat that runs through it. But other than that, it's it's the purest cut of meat. It's so good. And I'll do the same thing with that cut. I'll either sear it first or or after later. But you're you're. It's basically like a. It's kind of like a prime rib experience. You know, you've got this giant cut of meat, depending on how big the deer is. If you shot toothpicks, shout out to Uncensored season, uh, episode one. You know, you don't get as big of a, a cut, but like that deer I had last year, I had this monster. You know, if I could eat, if I could eat that, that'd be probably one of my cuts I'd pick. If I could only take like two cuts 
until the end of time. That'd be one of them. But this thing right here, man, same process. Just, you know, rub it down, let it sit. You don't need mustard or any of that crap on this. Like, just let it adhere on its own and then sear it or smoke it first. Either way is a great way to go. Yeah, I, and I, like, I oversimplify how I cook my backstrap. It is salt, pepper, and heat. That's literally all I do. And I, for one, I don't smoke meat like you do, so that changes how I'm cooking yeah. things. But, I, you know, I, it's such a simple way. You know, this is already put together. Casey nailed this on yeah. the mix, and but it's, it's very good. Not a whole lot to be gained if I smoke it, and honestly. Like, I, I had some good smoky flavor, but you salt and pepper is a totally fine way to go. The other thing, too um, – if if you don't know how to reheat backstrap, don't you know you need yeah, to eat it cold. You need to eat it cold, and it actually makes an awesome. I can never say this, but char charcuterie, charcuterie, char char charcuterie. It's like trying to say Worcestershire. Yeah. Um, uh, but the uh, you know it actually is amazing cold with like yep. blue cheese and crackers. So yep. um, or whatever your cheese is. So same thing for heart too. Yeah. Like it's cold. Awesome. Underrated cold. Yeah. Underrated cold. But if you're gonna reheat it, stick a probe in it. Oven at two two fifty. Uh, depending on the size of the vac strap, it'll take between seventeen and twenty five minutes. And uh, heat it to one ten. You don't want to go above one ten. That's a perfect eating temp. Uh, if it starts to get above there, you're going to be cooking it again, and you don't want to do that. That's when you end up with those gray lumps of of meat. So mm, yeah, yeah. That's the back strap and roast, man. Yep. All right. So we've talked at length before about your chili. Why don't you rehash a little bit for us on how you're using that seasoning and, and what you're doing to the meat for the chili. So the, the, that recipe you can take, um, I kind of mentioned you can, you can take like random cuts, right. Uh, and you're, you're going to smoke the meat, but a lot of times I end up with ro like, I call them small roasts when I label them. It's like random cuts of this or that, that you, that you kind of ended up with, but you don't want to throw them in the grind pile. Um, or at least I don't, I think a lot of people just chunk stuff in the grind pile and that's fine if that's your thing. But like a lot of shanks go to the grind pile, which breaks my heart. Uh, it's one of my favorite cuts cause there's so much you can do with that, but I'll take a lot of those like little chunks that I pile up, smoke those. And it's, it's the same thing. It's rubbed in this smoked over. Um, you know, I'm a big cherry wood guy. I just smoke a lot in cherry. Um, I, I don't like the robust smokes as much. I know it's, it sounds you know, everybody likes to be masculine and everything needs to be big and bold, but you can really put on some funk on a meat if you're not careful with some of those strong wood tastes. And, um, uh, I like a subtle smoke. So, uh, I, I do cherry wood on that, that chili recipe. Um, I did use this blend for the first time this year on it. I think it was the best chili, uh, I've made with that recipe. Favorite way I've done it, you know, you're going to smoke that meat, dice it up, and put it in at the chili at the end. Again, we don't want to overcook this. We don't want lumps of gray meat laying around. Yeah. Uh, so, um, but, yeah, I mean, this is, again, the perfect rub for that. Random question on that. Do you ever use this seasoning post-cook, just like a hit it before you serve it kind of thing? Um, I haven't, uh, but that kind of leads into the last thing we're going to talk, to, talk about, which is the barbecue sauce. So... I have, I, there, there's a, there's a point in your life in which you've made barbecue sauce and you'll never look at a bottle of sweet baby rays again, like the same. Uh, I forever was like sweet baby rays is the greatest barbecue sauce of all time. Right. And then you start trying some, like, like now I really like Lily's barbecue sauce. Have you seen these at uh, like the grocery store? It's a, it looks like a medicine and they used to wax dip the top of them, but they quit doing that. Um, I don't know. They quit doing that during la the last year. So something with the supply chain probably screwed up. Uh, but they they come in this giant like medicinal looking bottle, <laughs> and and there's a smoke sauce. There's a gold. There's a hot smoky, and um, that's the best barbecue sauce I've found. That's not mine. And and I'm I'm gonna say this and say that I'm totally ripping off Chris Lilly, uh, his barbecue recipe, his barbecue sauce recipe. Chris Lilly is a award-winning pit master. He is a champion level barbecue smoker. I learned much of what I know from watching or from his book, Fire and Smoke. We'll put a link to that in the show notes. Um, it's on my Go Wild profile. Uh, it's, it's the best book I've ever read on smoking barbecue. And it, it's not just on big green eggs. In fact, it's, it, it, he has, um, he, he approaches things 
in a, a very diverse way of, of you, how to do it on each smoker. So he's not just, he, in fact, he's, he's talking offsets. He's talking pellets. Uh, well, I don't think he specifically talks pellets. A lot of his, this book was written before the pellet craze, but you're going to treat that like an offset, uh, with, with an easy bake oven button to get it going. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Traeger fans. I can't help but take a little dig. You got to get the dig in. Yeah, and those guys laugh at me because they're like, "You idiot! You're out there every 15 minutes nursing a grill." Yeah. Um, but charcoal's best. Um, but if that book is fantastic, so um, I'm gonna put in the show notes. I'm gonna give notes to to the team, and we'll we'll put this recipe in there that I do with this sauce. It's I think he calls it the five minute recipe or something like that. He was at a competition, and um, all of a sudden they were like, Oh crap, we need barbecue sauce. What can we do? And they whisked together this recipe and it's really good. It's hard to beat. Um, but he, he has a custom rub that he does and I haven't found that to make a big difference. Um, you know, honestly, it's kind of like pork butt rubs. Uh, a good one's a good one. Like when you find a really good one, you, you can notice a difference, but a lot, so much of the pork butt flavor ends up coming from that long smoke and everything anyways. Um, now again, if you, if you got a bad rub, it's good. I can tell you. Like I can eat your uh, pulled pork and tell you that I, I have a better rub than you. <laughs> I'm being snotty, but like or snobby, but um, that that's kind of the fact. Like once you get a good one, though, a good one's a good one's a good one, um, in my opinion. Um, so so the uh, the barbecue sauce though, they needed a sauce, and they they were like, what can we do? And so they. Um, he, he, they, they whipped up, you know, it's got a lot of different vinegars in it. It's got ketchup. It's got a cherry pepper in it, uh, cherry pepper jelly. And there's a lot of stuff that like you might not have on hand, like tomato paste. And I've kind of started just winging it. And honestly, there's, there's like things you can leave out. So I've got mine documented that I usually do. And I'm telling you when I host like a dinner club or I cook for my friends or it's a summer cookout, if I make that sauce, nobody comes through and tries that without asking me, where to buy that barbecue sauce. And, um, one of the keys to that is using a rub. And this is a fantastic rub for that barbecue sauce. Um, I, I, I called it, uh, uh, the first time I ever made this was actually for my friends that we cooked for recently. Julian Paul it was for their engagement party. And, uh, I, I called it the, the, uh, the wedding night sauce, uh, cause, cause it was, it was, uh, spicy and sweet. Uh, and it is, and, and, you know, there's, um, instead of cherry pepper jelly, sometimes I'll use that, uh, the red, uh, Robert, I want to say Robert Redford. Now I'm saying it out loud. That sounds totally wrong. I'm like, is that the musician? Um, but R Robert Rothschild, is that it? Rothschild. I think there's, it, I think it's the Rothschild. They sell this, uh, mango habanero jam, um, that is, or is it pineapple? Uh, I've got it written down again. We'll put it in the show notes, but like, that's my twist on the Lily recipe that I do that, that just takes it like over the edge. It's so good. Again, his, his so this is, is a sweet sauce. It's spicy and sweet and it can be as spicy as you want it to be. You know, you can dial that back. You can take it out totally. Uh, but it's got like two tablespoons of this stuff in it. So it's, but again, you put it on anything you put it on, it's going to be fantastic. So sometimes I like to make, um, you know, I'll take a neck roast and cook it down to, uh, you know, over like nine hours, I'll cook a neck roast down to barbecue. And then I'll take sandwiches and, uh, we'll, 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 we'll take the bread and cook it in the oven and then pile that stuff on there with, and, and I treat it just like pulled pork with a pickle and some diced red onions. You put this sauce on there. I'm getting so hungry right now. I know. I'm doing this in the morning. <laughs> too close to yeah, lunch. Yeah, I'm, I'm like trying to be good, and I'm cutting back, so I, I'm trying to fast until lunch, and it's just not working right now. I'm about to start eating this season without anything. But, dude, I'm telling you, like, that barbecue sauce on a neck roast uh, is, is fantastic. And, in fact, speaking of neck roast, like, this is another awesome way to cook a neck roast. If you're not saving your neck roast, like – do it it's so easy to do and so many people um probably including most processors don't deal with it because it, again it's it's like a hard harder to get to because you got to go around all those those uh, uh those uh the spinal joints so there's a little bit of like rounding in and out with it but if if you ever save one and cook it you'll you'll have nightmares for how many you've left in the field or or whatever you know um and, and people do it's an it's not a, it's a cut that like I won't say it's common to not use, but a lot of people don't even know that you can use that meat or that it's good for anything else. And, um, it, it, it's, it roll, it just basically rolls right around the deer's neck and you end up with this ginormous cut of meat. The one I had last year was so big. I ended up cutting it into like four different cuts to be able to cook it all. Actually, I didn't I have one that's like, it's this big. It's like a, 
probably a nine pound cut of meat that I'm going to end up cooking in a slow cooker. Um, but you know, again, what you do with that, put this on there, you do sear that first. A lot of times you'll braise meat that you're going to slow cook in, in like a crock pot, pour this on there, coat heavy, cook it in olive oil. Um, you want it to brown. And I mean like get crispy and dude, I mean, it, this is, this is why, this is such a vert. This is why we carry this. This is, this is the only one of his seasonings that we carry, um, partially because he's designed it for wild game. Again, it's got the fi fine ground and the course, uh, but it's so versatile. I mean, how many ways have I just said that you can use this? We're talking about, we've, we talked about making barbecue. We've talked about backstrap. We've talked about roast. We've talked about chili and we've talked about barbecue sauce and you can literally put barbecue sauce on anything. So yep. I think my child would put barbecue sauce on like, I've seen her do it like grapes and apples. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, um, like I, I don't, she put like carrots, Chick-fil-A uh, sauce. She's done. She'll put it on literally anything. I think she put it on ice cream. So I, I love using barbecue sauce just on turkey sandwiches, cold turkey sandwiches, cold deli meat sandwiches, yeah. and that kind of stuff is usually how I use it the most. Mm -hmm. And then if I'm reheating barbecue, I put sauce in the pan with the meat and reheat it all together because I like to get the sauce really soaked in if, on the, the if, leftover stuff. Yeah, if I'm doing it done for the family and I'm reheating it, I'll um I'll do it. there's a couple different ways I'll do it. I don't like to microwave it because it gets rubbery, especially while game. There's no fat content to break uh to break back down. So I'll do um I'll reheat it on the stovetop or sometimes I'll do it kind of like a Korean barbecue and I'll get the either a grill or the uh the cast iron really hot and throw that in there and it gets crispy and it's delicious. Like it'll it'll crisp up on the ends. Kind of like I mean if you ever reheat a pork butt in the oven, it'll do that. Um it's so good. So I know we got to end the show. Um, we're going to put links to everything that I talked about in the show notes. I'm, we're going to put uh, links to this this seasoning. We'll put links to Chris Lilly's book. I'll uh, I'll give Braden shout out to Braden uh, for for <laughs> transcribing and for figuring out what the heck Brad talks about every time <laughs> on these shows. Uh, but we'll put that charcuterie char 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 <laughs> If, if someone could also let me know how to say that, it'd be great. Um, uh, but, yeah, we'll put links to all this in the, in the show notes. Um, follow Go Wild. If you're on YouTube, follow Go Wild. Subscribe to us. We Every Wednesday we're dropping one of these shows. Uh, they are usually with experts in the field, but Jacob and I really wanted to talk about this. Hey, this awesome product. We didn't even talk about herb dust, but, I mean, this stuff is the bomb on – mac and cheese you can put it on potatoes it i mean it's garlic and rosemary i, I haven't tried it yet on chicken but it's going to be i mean i can just like smell it until it's gonna be amazing on chicken um so we're gonna put links to all that uh you know but we, t we we talk to uh you know every every week we have a new expert that comes in and talks about something so subscribe to this show thanks for those who are listening and final call out uh here is if you are listening to this show you're watching this on youtube and you have not downloaded go wild you got to do that. You're going to get 10 bucks for creating an account. You can go to downloadgowild.com. We'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. And if all you got to do is put your name in, you put your name in and boom, we have give you $10. I don't know why you wouldn't try it. Yep. So. And there's new gear coming all regularly. The time. All the time. So, all right, that's it guys. Thank you. Thank you.